I have to go this way. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Golden Pike. Going to be our first deck today. Before we get into it and what that deck is and what it's all about, we are going to be doing our Champion Spotlight tomorrow night. Wednesday nights are when we do our Champion Spotlights. And that's where we take one, we take a random champion, don't know who it's going to be, and we build three, three or four, depending on the day, different decks with always with different regions and want them to be competitive decks for ranked to kind of showcase that champion and some uh, ranked options for that champion. So we're going to determine what champion it's going to be. There are 64 champions right now in Legends of Runeterra. Like I said, it's a random champion. Uh, so we're going to use our random number generator, get us a number between 1 to 64. We're going to click here. 61. Okay, champion number 61. So that means it's going to be in the very back row very expensive and we count them like like fizz is champion number one timo's champion number two and so on and we just kind of go down the list so champion 60 61 we can just kind of scroll all the way down here so aurelian soul is number 64 like i said they're 64 so we just go backwards 64 then that's 63 62 so 61 is malphite Okay, we're gonna try out some new malphite decks and and uh you know different regions um, so yeah, so if you got uh, suggestions for Malphite, let me know. That's going to be tomorrow. We'll have Malphite uh, Spotlight Night. But before Malphite Spotlight Night tomorrow, we are going to have our four decks today. Got some fun ones. We're back in ranked. Our first one here is going to be Golden Pike, and this was a viewer submitted deck. That's the two Ds next to the decks mean. Uh, so this is a donation deck. This is going to be a Golden Ambassador Pike deck. So Pike's our only champion. We're going like Sharima Allegiance, where if we hit the Allegiance with Golden Ambassador, that's our way for us to draw Pike, but then also give the Pike plus two, plus two, right? So then it has five health with that quick attack, and uh, it'd be pretty difficult for it to die. And then, of course, you know, it get, it's larger, so it's easier for it to level up because it's got to do 15 damage. We, of course, want to lurk, though, with, with Pike decks. And thankfully, Shurima is also a region that does a pretty good job lurking. We have, you know, this thing, Xersei Hatchling, that's a lurker. We have this Xersei Caller, um, another lurker. We also have Call the Pack that's going to be able to create some random lurker followers for us. Plus, Call the Pack is going to be a way to put Pike back on top of the deck. So that, we, you know, because whenever whenever you lurk, you can attack with like a Rock Hopper and lurk, right? You can attack with anything and lurk. And so if we put Pike on top of the deck, we can attack with Rock Hopper and uh, get the... Um, get the death from below from the pike. We also have some predict cards in Shurima to put pike on top, you know, with like the caller, the chronomancer, if we get lucky there. We also have the other Bilgewater card that we're playing, just two of is Bone Skewer, because we don't want, we want to make sure that we hit our allegiance all the time. So we only have the, those two things with Bilgewater, Bone Skewer, we can use that with the pike. Um, pike goes great with like Ruthless Predator because of the quick attack, it's already pretty big. It has a lot of power, so Ruthless Predator really works out with Pike. Um, and then Siphoning Strike, right? If we're going to like make Pike larger, plus two, plus two with Gold Ambassador, let's make it larger with Siphoning Strike as well. Let's have Pike strike something, uh, get plus two, plus two, get that Pike to level up and start killing everything. It's pretty fantastic. So that's going to kind of be the, the thing, though. It's like we're just going to be trying to find Pike, have Pike take over, have Pike kill a bunch of stuff, kill all their things. Should be pretty cool. So we're calling this Golden Pike. All right, let's go play our five games in ranked. Oh, Silver Zed. Silver Zed's really good. Yeah, this is a great combination. Both champions attack really, really well. Both champions um, are in regions that are very aggressive too. So good combination. I mean, I like all these cards. I could see getting rid of the Hourglass, but Hourglass is like good at blocking. You know, like they have like a Sivir attack or like they challenge your your thing. You want to Hourglass it. I think I'm gonna get rid of the Preservarium. It's a little, you know, it's a little slow. We need to be pretty fast and aggressive in this matchup. So 
So they thought about playing something. Alright, missed the lurk. Which, to be honest, we're going to miss lurk a lot. I'm going to keep the hourglass. I'm going to keep the two mana for the hourglass. Sorry, Preservarium. Mm. Like I said, keep the two mana for the Bone Skewer. I guess I do this. The bride is swallowed down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we're using the rainbow Poro Guardian, but looks a little off place for this board. Plus three. Ugh, three is too much. Nope, stop. Yeah, I think this is the best play. Because we, we have to kill the Zed. I think this is the best play. Put the Hunter back. It's my only way to kill the Zed. Not gonna lie, I kinda wanna just siphoning strike right now. And on the Green Glade duo. But that could backfire. Delirium says go for it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe winning otherwise is gonna be tough. Like so I'm thinking like they could they could play like another Zed, but I guess if they do have another Zed, we're we're probably kinda dead anyway. Alright. Alright, chat. Just keep saying YOLO. So I guess we'll go ahead and uh, try it. Well, there's a lot of cards they can have that can break this up. But hopefully they don't have any. Okay. Alright, that's good. Yeah. Kind of expected Shape Stone, but the new Shape Stone didn't break up my Siphoning Strike. But. Okay, so that's 8 out of 15 for my Pike. But that, yeah, like I said, like I think there's a lot of good cards here in the, these two regions. And Zed is a heck of a card. I don't see any way we can win this. But I guess I'll just pass. If they attack, I lose. There we go. If they don't attack, I guess I kind of have a little bit of a chance. Just a tiny chance. Yeah, I think Zed Sivir is, is pretty awesome. So, GG's. Ooh, okay. So this is going to be a little bit more of a removal-heavy deck. This is probably a go-hard deck, I would think. Like, maybe like a Withering Whale-type deck. Um, I kind of want to send Pike back. So we can have the opportunity to lurk it. I don't want to have two of these one-drop things, because they're going to be like a Withering Whale-type thing. So keep like hatchling chronomancer. Do we do we send Pike back? I kind of think we do because like right like because Pike in, in just your hand is like a regular two three isn't as good. Okay, cool. Chat was saying Mulligan Pike. Yeah, I knew there would go hard deck. I, I maybe should just Mulligan the hatchling also honestly. Give me a better chance of hitting lurk. Have more lurkers in the deck. Okay, so none of these are going to be a lurker, but Merciless Hunter is a great card, so I'm, I think it's either Skip or Merciless Hunter, and even though we won't get lurk and we don't hit Pike, 
I mean, it's still Merciless Hunter. So yeah, I mean, can can't be mad at that. Keep us safe. I turn it like so. Kind of gave, gave us a little bit more information. Like, if our top card is Pike, then our gold ambassador is going to miss. Soak it in. Bask in the sunlight. But since we missed the, um, you know, missed that, then it was, like, there's only, we knew it wasn't Pike on top, and there's only two, two, uh, two Bone Skewers in the deck, so it could only be one possible Bone Skewer for us to miss it completely, so that probably wasn't happening. The problem, the problem here is the Gold Ambassador plus Death from below doesn't work that well, because you just summon, oh, no, no, your, your Pikes everywhere have the plus two plus, no, 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 yeah, because Gold Ambassador doesn't have your Pikes everywhere get plus two plus two, right, Siphoning Strike does, but not Gold Ambassador, so, like, if we... If we bone skewer and put the pike back on top to get a death from below, it, that new pike won't have the plus two plus two. If anybody wants to be a mod to do the predictions and everything, I'm I'm all, you know, I'll. Let you be a mod if you if you want to be. I'll take my share. I remember you. Who's with me? That are if you want to stay off my list. Alright, first four damage for Pike. I like having this right of negation available for the pike as well. Now Shapestone. Shapestone with pike just gives it that that extra plus three. Yes, Viego looks really good. Yeah, saw Vie yeah Viego was just previewed like an hour ago. And, yeah, it looks really good. Especially the, whatever the name of the ephemeral thing is, I already forgot it, but the ephemeral 1-1s one that keep growing, like, that's the thing that looks great with Viego, for sure. Alright, I want to get this Chronomancer. Let's see what, what else we got. I could, I think I'm going to just take another Preservarium, to be honest. You know, this kind of deck, like, they, they're definitely, you know, trying to play, like, a longer game. I think I'm going to need more cards. Okay, that's the third Twisted Fate. They're putting that back. Okay. So I need to I need to Bone Skewer to kill this Twisted Fate right now. Um, the question is what to Bone Skewer. So like if because that's the thing, I Bone Skewer Pike, we get rid of that plus two plus two, and I don't really want to get rid of that plus two plus two. So I guess I Bone Skewer like a Merciless Hunter, so I get the Vulnerable again. Yeah. I don't really need to predict again. Haha, -ha, there we go. Their Twisted Fates are gone, and so are they. Golden Pike with the win. We were one and one. And you just do the same thing, and then you choose win or lose afterwards. We got an aggro deck with some Darius. Agro Darius. Ooh, call the packs. Interesting. Well, none of these are good against aggro. Call the pack, I could see, but still, it's two mana. You know, like, I want bodies right away, right? We need bodies right away against aggro to get blockers out immediately. Would 
you look at this place? Gently. Too fast, it? I'm playing I played the rock hopper so that I have a blocker for the Reaper. And that's kind of the only reason. We love it when they run. Do I wanna play Golden Ambassador next round? Pike does have a good champion spell. I can see taking the Golden Ambassador. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. Try to get a four or five pike. Step lightly. Deck's looking pretty good right now. Explosives primed. The down. Oh, wow, that sentry. Oh, that sentry is messy. Oh, that sentry. Noxus stream aggro is looking good, especially with this treasure seeker. You know, like getting this treasure seeker, really nice. But yeah, that sentry is perfect. But yeah, treasure seeker making these waking sands. That's pretty nice. It's not safe. Not here. Not now. Let's be down to four. Dang. Wait, what? Oh, because I guess the other pikes... Because I guess, they, like, didn't we put Gold Ambassador on top? But I guess... Okay, um... I gotta hope no Noxian Fervor. Or anything that stops this, okay. So basically I need to do this to turn Pike into 6 power. So that then I can attack with Pike, it does 6, and now it's done 10. And so now Bone Skewer with the Pike that, that's the 10-5. The Bone Skewer will mow down everything. We can kill their whole board with that. I guess I just keep Ride of Negation available instead of playing the Golden Ambassador, because this the Bone Skewer already is going to annihilate everything. Right? Or will will Pike not level up? Will Pike not level up because Pike's not in play? Yeah, so kill everything. Yeah. Yeah, so it kills everything. Um, and I guess I'm just going to do that. And now we, and we have Ride Negation for protection. Oh, what a surprise, a pike. Doo 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 doo. Bask in the sunlight. Gonna find a gift for an action, right, Arda? No, why do we get two expensive ones?
You can tell I, I have to keep Renegation all the time because of cards that kill me. Decimate. Oh, Ruinous Path? This isn't good. I want. I need, I need them just to have nothing but units and no spells, and nothing but more. No other Legion saboteurs either. Oh, they just had more ruinous paths. Dang. Yeah, them them just ha having all ruinous paths is not good for me. I could have used you last round. Zerse Hatchling. They'll never see it coming. Alright, well any spell wins them the game. We gotta just hope they just have units. We'll be able to finish this out pretty quickly if they just only have units. We'll be okay. Don't have another ride negation in the deck. If they don't break, they'll burn. Your path ends here. This music is so suspenseful too. Can't let them know that I don't have right negation. There. They finally cast it. That was a wonderful hand for them. That was that was re really impressive, impressive, especially with the treasure treasure seekers. I felt really good about it till that arachnoid sentry. I guess Call the Pack's gone? Like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing with Call the Pack. You know, so we got Hatchling, Hunter. You know, right, like, the, these aren't Lurker cards. Well, there's one. I was gonna say, they're not Lurker cards in my hand to put on top anyway, and I wanna, you know, try to be as aggressive as possible. Pass. Pass. Good. Not Frozen Thrall, that's good. Oh, would you look at this place? oh yeah, the one time when they attacked the three things, I could just block the very first thing and then I didn't have to use the Bone Skewer. That's true. I don't, it doesn't really change anything about that game, like nothing changes, but yeah, I could have just blocked. I guess it wouldn't have put the, the pike back on top, I guess that's the one thing it cha would change. Okay. Arda's gonna make a meal of them. Gonna catch the sky. Bike was just in the wrong spot. <laughs> Did it? it was the. If it was like I, you know, card either way. If it was the card before, we would have got the the lurk, or if it was the card after we would have got the lurk, but it was in the wrong spot. Welcome to the tipsy. All of this is ours. We missed? That means we have another pike on top? Just right in the wrong spot again? How are you always in the wrong spot, pike? Um, I guess I just play pike, I guess. I could play the caller, but... I, I don't regret not keeping the call attack. Oh, 
I was worried about, like, as far as playing the pike first, I was worried about them, like, with the five mana, them playing, I thought they were going to play, like, the five mana, four or five, that puts the frozen thrall in play. That's what I was worried about. Well, I wonder if Ancient Hourglass is good. Mm, I could see Ancient Hourglass being okay. For how they've slow they've played with everything else, it kind of feels like they got to have like Frostbite stuff, right? It's so, like maybe Ancient Hourglass saves us from some Frostbite that happens. I don't know. Sure, we'll take that. Goomba says Hourglass is meh. Is meh. We got lucky, we got a lurk. Why would you block Pike and not like either of the other two? Like why Why is that the card you block? Do I want a bone skewer and kill Lissandra? Yeah, I don't know. Like they could have just blocked this Xerxi caller that was also four power and just killed it. I'm passing. I want to draw the death from below the next round. I guess, oh, I draw the death from below the next round anyway because of this. Well, that's kind of cool. Probably don't need to play that thing, but I will. Alright, so Pike's at seven. The brine has swallowed down. This jawfish next round could be really crazy. Oh, that was such a good card for them. That they had that they didn't have to use the other instant century. That was real good for them. I should have played this Chronomancer instead of this Pike. I can't go to one, can I? I can't. I should have played this Chronomancer. go this way. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. I'll take a ruthless predator. If I Ruthless Predator all it's doing, it's just doing 2 damage to the, the Thrall, but doesn't kill it. Um, but I guess that's still... Yeah, we don't we don't need to have this Hourglass. Alright. So it puts it down to 2, like where I can have my Chronomancer challenge it. Or I can just have the Pike challenge it. Again, with a quick attack. Uh, leveled up Viego is definitely OP. 
Viega looks real good. And it's, it's like that, that one one ephemeral that grows a bunch. That thing's going to be really good. I think that's going to surprise people how good that card, that that whole thing is. And like the, the three mana three three that puts that into play, that's going to be pretty awesome. Yes, we hit the Lurk! We hit the Lurk! Golden Pike! Alright. We actually beat Thralls. Oh man, that's such a feels good, beating Thralls. I, just like we lost, you know, we did lose to the other aggro deck, I think this one's going to be pretty tough as well. Um, we're going to send the spells back. Try to keep our blockers. Oh, I do, do not like double Preservarium. That's not so good. Okay, I like that. Oh, no, no, why did I just pass? <laughs> Where's my axe? Fooled ya. Ow, we missed the lurk. Oh, come on, another Preservarium? Why do we have so many Preservariums? Um, do I even keep Pike on top? I don't want to beat whatever woke you up. Okay. Rex, we want to lurk the Pike. Listen to me. See, now this is where we want to hit Pike. That my one mana card actually trade with something. There's plenty of killing left. Gross. Keep up, keep up. At least it's not misfortune. Last Lome buys me a new sail. Well, that's good. I'll do better this time. I will run you over. All right, the first of many Preservariums. Gonna find a gift for an Ecton, right, Arda? Probably just gonna be Fervor, Noxion Fervor. That is. Uh, considering passing, I know I don't I don't get that challenge, but it keeps them from like playing a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna kill me anyway. I could definitely see just passing here. Yeah. Keeps them from, like, you know, playing a gangplank after combat or whatever. I'm so dead. Alright, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Noxus is pretty good, especially super fast Noxus aggro, pretty good against, um, against Shurima. Don't have the Nexus healing. Play a unit. 
If it's just another unit, we, we could survive. We could survive against units, right? Because we get to do this now. Oh, come on. All three Noxion Fervors? <laughs> just like last time, you know? Like, if, if they just have units, we could survive, but... Unfortunately, they just have, you know, like last time they had multiple Runas Paths and Decimates, and this time they have all three Fervors. Okay, so there's our Golden Pike deck. I think it actually played pretty well, but I think the Noxus Aggro is going to be just really tough to beat. Noxus Aggro is really good, and they have lots and lots of Nexus damage, and you just don't have the Nexus healing and, and the, the speed there with, with this one. But I think other kind of aggro decks that are relying on a bunch of units, and just kind of any, any deck in general that's relying on a bunch of units, I think you can do some good stuff because Pike can really, really control the board, as we saw there. Sorry. Um, our leveled up Pike, um, you know, looked great. You know, like you get to just kill everything, you know, with leveled up Pike. And so leveled up Pike, Siphoning Strike, all that kind of stuff uh, was very good. Uh, I think the Ruthless Predator was probably my least favorite card in here. I think I want some other kind of interaction. Um, and since, since we know that we don't have like the you know like that our toughest matchups are going to be like those noxus aggro to be honest i could see just playing a couple copies of devoted council i i don't it's not too too difficult to level up pike and then you start healing your nexus for two every single round because the only other nexus healing that we can play is like the ruinous paths which ruinous path is perfectly fine also i could definitely see playing ruinous path because you know you do slay a decent amount of stuff where's ruinous path wherever it is there it is so i could see doing that also is that that's like another way to you know draw through your deck and get more more pikes and and more other stuff and um you know i could maybe that's just like the thing to do instead of the ruthless predators and that you know we, we can be pretty aggressive too and that could help out um yeah so you know so like one of those two cards because i think you gotta be you know maybe you gotta heal the nexus one one way or another um, another option is to just kind of punt that matchup and just not really, you know, like you try hard and, you know, like we're, we're close in both of those games, but, you know, maybe you don't have to play those kind of cards that you don't really want in other matchups, basically just for that matchup. Um, yeah, that, that's another option as well. But I kind of, I think I would kind of want to play something over the Ruthless Predators. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you know those are those are i guess those are like i don't know what what shirima really does against those fast noxus aggro decks i guess those are like the best that you got if you're looking at just shirima cards um another option is just like treasure hunter i guess bilgewater has nexus healing with citrus courier but we don't want to play more bilgewater cards uh we want we just want to play more shirima cards and i think spirit fire is too slow uh, Treasure Hunter, I guess, could give you a, a decent blocker that gives you, like, the 5T that's attacking also. So that that could be just another option. Or this Treasure Seeker, this thing. Instead of the uh, Ruthless Predator, it's just give you two more bodies, or, you know, two more one-mana bodies uh, that uh, do stuff. I Yeah, so I'd kind of, like, think of, like, playing something, like, some of those. I would kind of maybe go for this Treasure Seeker. I think this Treasure Seeker is a really strong card. But between... Treasure Seeker, Ruinous Path, and maybe Devoted Council. If you can, you know, level up your champion and then have your Devoted Council heal your Nexus, I think you probably want to go with some something like that because I think that fast aggro deck is going to be a tough matchup. Um, yeah, Treasure Seeker is kind of the new Doom Keeper, right? Yeah, because it's that two one, so it trades well. Um, but that makes the five two in hand. Five two is really big. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind saying, you know, trying out the Devoted Council. Is that good? You know, it's Devoted Council is not going to help you in a lot of other matchups, but it'll definitely help you in that Noxus matchup. So kind of play around with it. You got two open slots here if you're trying this deck out later. Um, you know, feel free to play whatever you want. I do recommend them being uh, Shreema cards. Quicksand's an option. Uh, Xenotype Researcher is definitely an option. But you got lots of other threes. Um, you probably want something else. I don't know. I guess Devoted Council is technically a three, too. So anyway, uh, yeah. Go and try out some different stuff. Let me know if you if you find something. I, I would love to hear y'all on uh, uh, YouTube later. If you find something that you think is very good against those different Noxus aggro decks that you think that we can play in Shirima, that would be good for the for that slot. 
um, you know, which card do you think is the best? Is it Ruinous Path? Is it Treasure Seeker? Is it Devoted Council? Or you got a better idea? All right, but that's going to be it here for Golden Pike. The rest of the deck was really cool, and I liked having, like, just pikes in hand all the time. We'd always find pikes with the Golden Ambassadors and the Predicts and stuff, and then Siphoning Strike Pike. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, it was a, it was a really cool pike deck. If you just want to do, like, cool pike stuff and, uh, you know, kill, kill your opponent with a bunch of pikes, I recommend this deck. I think this was a fun one to play. But that's going to be here for this one, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.